Hi, this is lecture 2.4 of the SAGE based course on Monte Carlo methods. We just learned how to define functions as procedures earlier and looking at plots of functions and mathematical functions that are built in SAGE. Now we will be moving to our next topic of the week which is collections in SAGE. We've already talked about the SAGE number types and a little bit about the string type. You've also met sets in Sage. Remember that a set in Sage is an example of a collection type. Okay, it's a type of collection. Okay. Collections are a very useful idea, right? What are collections? They're simply grouping or collecting together some data or variables so that we can refer to it and use it collectively. That's the idea of a collection. Sage provides quite a few collections. One that we will meet very often is the list. This is our sort of fundamental collection. Example one is about lists. Technically, a list in Sage is a sequence type. This basically means that the order of the things in the list is important and we can use concepts related to ordering when we work with a list. Don't worry about that unless you're interested in the details, but look at the worksheet cells below to see how useful and flexible lists are so we can kind of learn lists by doing and playing with them. When you want a list in Sage, you put the things in the list inside square brackets. Okay, so this is a left and right square bracket. You can put almost anything in a list, including having lists of lists, as we will see later. So L1 here is the variable and we are assigning with the equality symbol this left square bracket followed by right square bracket. So this is how you define an empty list. Okay, And then we are asking Sage to display the L1 that we have just assigned. The empty list pops up as output here. So empty list is a very important idea. Often you will create an empty list and start adding things to it. Okay, what if you want to create a list of strings? Okay, so here is L2. L2 is now assigned this list of strings. So orange, apple, and lemon are strings, and we separate them by commas and assign them to L2. So the second line here we are asking uh, Sage to display L2. So it displays L2. So we can append or add something to the end of L2 by simply calling L2 dot append method. Okay, And in the append you give the string you want to append to the end of L2. And the second line simply asks Sage to display L2. So now you have orange, apple, lemon, and banana that was just appended to L2 displayed here. L3 is just a list of integers. So 10, 11, 12, and 13. And we can simply hit the evaluate button. Of course, Nothing pops out because we didn't ask Sage to display L3. If you want, you can just open a new cell and ask what L3 is. All L3 is 10, 11, 12, and 13 that we just assigned above. So it's in the memory, although it may not display unless you ask Sage to explicitly display what you just assigned. So let's ask what is the type of L3. Type of L3 is type list because L3 is a collection of type list. So there are various functions we can use with lists. A very useful one is LEN. LEN stands for the length of the list. That is the number of elements in the list. So if I simply ask LEN of L3, what should I get? The length of L3, which is 4, right? Because L3 is one, two, three, four has four elements in it. So length of L3 is four. What about getting at the elements in a list once we have put them in? 
This is done by indexing into the list or list indexing. Okay, this is probably slightly confusing. Once you have a list, you index into it by using the brackets again. Okay, so let's see. The first position in Sage is 0. Okay, so if I ask what is L3 of 0, it gives me 10. Because remember, L3 was 10, 11, 12, 13. So the first position is the 0th index. The second position is the first index. The third position is the second index. And the fourth position is the third index. Because indexing of elements starts with 0 in lists. OK. So there is L3 of 3. L3 of 3 is the fourth element in the list, because we start from 0. So you'll get an error message if the index you use is out of range which means that you're trying to refer to something outside the range of the f list. Sage knows that the list only has four elements, so asking for the element in the fifth position, which is index 4, makes no sense. And Sage complains. It says, index error, list index out of range. And if you hit to the left of it, you'll get much more details on the error. But uh, So we can also get at more than one element in the list with the index operator by using the colon symbol to indicate all elements from a position to another position. So this is easier seen in action. So here we are asking Sage to list the elements in position 0 to 2 in the list L3. So it will give you 0 and 1. Okay. It doesn't include 2. So the first two elements are 10 and 11 for L3. If you leave out the starting and ending positions and just use colon, you will get the whole list. And this is a very, very useful way of making copies of whole lists. For example, we can assign to our new variable L4 a copy of L3. OK, so before we do that, let's see what L3 of colon does. L3 of colon will just give you a copy of L3 back. Now you can assign that copy of L3 using the assignment operator to the variable L4. And we can ask L4 to be displayed. So this is now a copy of L3. Sage also provides some helpful ways to make lists quickly. The one you'll use most often is range. Okay, The range method. So used in its most simple form, range of n gives you a list of n integers from 0 to n minus 1. OK, so now let's assign the range of 10 to L5 and ask it to display L5. So now you have quickly a way of getting integers from 0 to 9, 10 elements. Note that the numbers you get start from 0. And the last one is 9. It's always 1 less than the input here. You'll see that we can get even cleverer and use range to get a list that starts and stops at specified numbers with a specified step size between the numbers. OK, let's try this to get numbers and steps of 5 from 100 to 195 in the cell below. So this is how you would do it. Start at 100, end at some number less than 200, and go in increments of 5. Let's see what L6 has been assigned. Aha, L6 just gives you a number from 100, 295 in steps of 5, 100, 105, 110, and so on. Notice that, again, we don't go right up to the stop number, 200 but to the last one below it, taking into account our step size 5. So in this case, we go up to 195, which is less than 200 here. When we just asked for range of 10, Sage assumed a default start of 0 and a default step of 1. 
that's what range of 10 actually did. So good time to pause the video and go through these U tries very carefully. Please look at these docs and read some of the documents if you have to. Um, this is the best way to keep up with the material and learn about new functions that may not be introduced necessarily in this class. And in the next video, we'll go to example two.